So I am here to get to some of our honorees. In 1961, Newton Minow was appointed the chairman of the Federal Communications Commission at the tender age of 34. He was a lawyer with an interest in children's television, and with a few, within a few months of taking office, he addressed the annual convention of the National Association of Broadcasters, calling on them to do something about what he called the vast wasteland of network television. OC Inc. created the Newton Minow Award on the 50th anniversary of that speech to recognize government officials who, like Newton Minow, have demonstrated exemplary public service in support of the public interest. At a time when sometimes government service is too easily maligned in our discourse, we want to raise up those individuals who feel that genuine call to public service and use their time in office accordingly. When Mignon Clyburn was nominated to the FCC back in 2009, some were unfamiliar with her background, even though she had served for 11 years on the South Carolina Public Service Commission. She had never worked inside the Beltway. Some were worried that she wasn't a lawyer, much less a telecommunications lawyer. But Commissioner Clyburn quickly distinguished herself. People became familiar. She brought her unique perspective, as well as her commitment to serving the public to all aspects of her work on the commission. We were privileged here to hear her articulate that vision the following year in 2010 when she gave the Parker Lecture. And at that time, she held the audience wrapped when she told the story of Sarah May Fleming, a South Carolina domestic worker who lost her place in history when the media barons of the state refused to cover her struggle to desegregate the buses of Columbia 17 months before Rosa Parks did it in Birmingham. I was one of many who could not raise my hand when, I, when she said, do you know who Sarah May Fleming is? We didn't. She wasn't in the media. She didn't exist as far as, unfortunately, many people are concerned. But Everett Parker, back at that speech also, was privileged to attend that lecture. And he used the same occasion. He just wanted to say one thing, he said. And we brought down that microphone down to him. And he said, over the eight decades of the FCC's existence, a woman has never served at its chairman. And it was high time, he thought, that something was done about it. Well, Commissioner Clyburn had her chance in 2013 when she was appointed acting chair of the agency. During her six months on the job, she prioritized the, the uh, cause of another unlikely heroine, Martha Wright. Martha Wright is a grandmother who did not understand why she would have to pay exorbitant cost to communicate with her grandson who was in prison. Commissioner Clyburn turned Mrs. Wright's campaign into her own cause. During her tenure as chair, Clyburn set the agency on a course to finally take action on the predatory phone rates charged to people who are in prison or in jail or in detention centers. The people who give the moral support to the ones behind bars need to have that relief. And now there's chances that they are able to do that much more affordably. Mignon Clyburn's time as acting chair was characterized by a flurry of activity, moving the agency along at the start of the second Obama administration, not allowing the agency to miss a beat. And I remember particularly her warm welcome and applause at the 2013 Chairman's Dinner, how welcome she was and how much applause there was, and it just showed how much she was admired across the entire industry, her spirit, her kindness. And another example of her empathy is recognizing the importance of helping low-income families get internet access services today at a more affordable rate. The same way we were now, the Lifeline program, first helped people pay for landline services 30 years ago. And thanks to her leadership and her colleagues, Chairman Wheeler, Commissioner Rosenworcel, the FCC has moved forward to modernize the Lifeline program, enabling more and more Americans access to, government, uh, access to the internet, meaning access to government services, ability to apply for jobs, and to be able to do their homework, and Commissioner Rosenworcel's famous homework gap online. Over the course of more than seven years at the FCC, Mignon Clyburn has never forgotten the needs of those Americans who may not be able to call on a Washington lobbyist to advocate on their behalf. Whether they are low-income families trying to uh, make their way in a high-tech economy, grandmothers struggling to stay in touch with prison grandsons, or ordinary consumers like you and me, she has always had our back. Her mantra is community, 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 and she demonstrated that this past year by the people and places she visited on her Connecting Communities tour. And I know, before we turn to her remarks, that she would not want us to continue without acknowledging her stellar staff, many of whom are in the room today or came by this morning who have been an integral part of her success. Mignon Clyburn is the best combination of leadership that we see in Washington. 
a visionary leader who stands up for what she believes is right and who assembles an outstanding staff to transform that vision into reality. PBS recently chronicled the life of Newton Minow in a new documentary, describing him, quote, as a man whose principled engagement in public life elevates the common good and advances the American ideals of liberty and justice for all. Those same words certainly could be applied to Mignon Clyburn. Now, we are sorry that today, at age 90, Newton Minow himself is no longer able to travel to be with us today, but we celebrate that he remains active and, in fact, was working for home yesterday as a member uh, of the Commission on Presidential Debates. We are pleased that his son-in-law, David Apatoff, is, could be with us today to represent him and join us in presenting the Newton Minow Award to Commissioner Clyburn. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Cheryl. I thought she was going to keep my award, but that's okay. <laughs> it is such an incredible honor to be recognized by the United Church of Christ, a congregation I have long admired for its commitment to environmental and social justice. To even be considered for this award, named after a man with such a deep commitment to public service, believe me when I say it's humbling and moving. On my way here, I thought about the legacy of Chairman Newton Minow, we know him as Newt, <laughs> who headed an agency of then seven members. How would you like two more of me, uh, Chairman Wheeler? <laughs> <laughs> Whose leadership led to the establishment of uh, the District of Columbia's first public television station, the inclusion of UHF tuners in all TV sets, and a new era of satellite communication services. We are now embarking on the next generation of advanced communications, one that could never have been imagined back when Chairman Minow was at the helm. The issues are increasingly complex as we work to effectively manage, manage spectrum, protect consumer privacy in an online world, and ensure reasonable rates for business uh, broadband. But one thing has not changed over the past five decades is the Commission's obligation to focus on universal opportunities in ensuring that all Americans have access to robust, affordable communication services. In fact, as you heard, back in 1961, Chairman Minow wisely talked about the need for more diversity and more alternatives on our public airwaves. My, we're having the same conversation today, aren't we? These issues led to the founding of UCC's Office of Communications in 1959, and I too miss Dr. Parker and think about him today because the values we had back then, or he had back then, and, it, and challenged us with are the ones I still hold in high esteem. So I am truly thankful for UCC's continued leadership on issues that invoke the concept of universal opportunities and seek to close the digital and opportunities divide. This has been demonstrated by the church's laser focus on affordable communication services for low-income Americans, as well as for those who are currently incarcerated. I had the opportunity to uh, go to a facility uh, in Essex County, uh, New Jersey, and the need, if it weren't clear to me before, when I looked in the eyes of a two and a half year old little boy who got rare visits uh, to his mother, if the need for affordable access and just reasonable rates were not clear before, they were made crystal clear on yesterday. And these and other actions by all of us collectively will continue to make a difference in the lives of Americans' families. It is also gratifying to see many friendly faces in the audience today, including Commissioner Michael Copps, who's the first recipient of this award, Chairman uh, Wheeler, who I better say looks friendly uh, because I have to go back and serve with him, um, <laughs> uh, for Commissioner and my friend, uh, uh, the, the Honorable Commissioner Colette Honorable, yes, her last name is Honorable, uh, Chairman Minnows, if you've met his son-in-law, uh, Reverend Riley Temple, and my good friend, uh, Ralph Everett. And I know there are others in the audience, but please forgive me. I'm still working on my contact lenses, so I cannot see you clearly. But since we are in church, 
And since I am a PK twice removed, meaning I'm a politician's kid whose father was a minister, so I have a double, uh, I'm not going to say burden, I will say opportunity. <laughs> I want to share a scripture that means a lot to me. And it really summed up and it, it reinforces the thanks that I have to the church and especially Cheryl Lienza, whose friendship has meant the world to me. If you allow me to go to, go to uh, 1 Samuel 16, chapter 7th verse. But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Now I share this with you because of one thing that Cheryl mentioned in uh, my introduction. People had doubts. People drew conclusions, but they did not know what was in my heart. So I am honored to receive this award today. I am humbled and I am moved to be recognized by this incredible church. And I thank all of you, including my staff and people who I did not mention, for giving me the strength I need and the support I need to be your commissioner. Again, I thank you and God bless.